Hello and welcome everybody to More Talk. It is Thursday, 2 p.m. on the East Coast and... It is 11 a.m. on this kind of partly sunny, partly rainy day in sunny San Diego. And you are listening to More Talk. If you are on the YouTube podcast, please hit subscribe. We are over 30 users, uh, hoping to get to 40. If you're on Spotify, thank you for joining. And keep an eye out Monday on YouTube for our bike drops, which are getting a lot of views across the industry. And if you are interested in sponsoring, if you're a lender and want to get your name out for loan officers, we'll take it one episode, we'll take it five. We also have some great adopt brand sponsors that we like to tell the world about. i uh, just going through them briefly, quickly, but importantly, uh, one is OPX America, a right shore BPO firm that does it totally different because it allows you to have your own captive. It works with IMBs very successfully at the lowest cost uh, to originate a loan. And they believe in collaboration, which Adopt the Brand is all about. Valix Valuations, which uh, is not an AMC, it's an appraisal firm. It gives you more control over the process. And it's very important now to have or build out your bench so that when volume goes up, appraisals are always at the bottleneck, you will have the best team available to help you scale. And as finally, uh, Silverworks Solutions, uh, the persona-based bot company uh, that has been helping especially larger companies be more efficient by going from people to automation. So Michael always tells us about top of the funnel uh, sponsorship opportunities as well, uh, including some of the products that those are available through our brand or through him, but through the brand of listening. Yeah. But, and by the way, Michael, speaking of appraisal as one of our sponsors, I contacted, I had an appraisal I needed to get done for one of my clients, not related to a mortgage, by the way, I contacted three AMCs and this is not a joke. I don't know if you, if, if, if you've ever been an originator and you need to start a new company and you said, Hey, you know what? I need, I need some AMCs to put into my platform. I won't mention who they are, but it took me 45 minutes just to get an appraisal order, which was kind of ridiculous. So the fact that we can have a sponsor that's not an AMC, uh, that we have some control. If you're an originator and you want and you want to be able to create that, I think that's an opportunity to be looking into that for sure. And by the way, I will be promoting that next week uh, as I go to the Mortgage Bankers Association, uh, CREF, the Commercial Real Estate Forum for Multifamily uh financing. So I'm looking forward to anybody who is listening right now. I'll be able to see you in San Diego for the for the multifamily conference sponsored by the Mortgage Bankers Association. That's awesome. And do you want to talk anything about the family office or opportunities for loan officers or even we get a lot. I mean, our views are going up two views an hour. Uh, consumers are, are coming on just for resources the way we deliver it. They're saying in this market, you know, maybe I'm not a conventional, maybe I, I am a conventional, but the inventory is not working. Any other ideas? Uh, what are you looking for out at that conference? And what do you have today that people could use maybe to open up some other doors for, for business well, in their area? If you're a retail originator and you're looking to maybe uh, put some builders in or some builder business into your platform, uh, I'm no longer in that in that residential real, real estate space on a, I mean, I can still do it technically for but I, I, I don't pursue that business. But uh, at, with the family office, we've been funding quite a bit of multifamily and also condominium and also spec uh, small developments. When I say small, we're talking about 40 to 50 homes, right? We're not, it's not a master plan community like we've seen here in Southern California of, of uh, thousands of houses. But if, you know, with the family offices that I've been speaking to, some of my colleagues that are out there, We've been able to put together financing that some of the banks have not been able to have the willingness to do because of the liquidity or lack of liquidity that, that, that they've had. So putting it out there at the family office where they can get the money, get the draws uh, and get the financing where they, not, because it's private money, we can get much more creative in the way that we, we are making the distributions for construction loans, whether it's spec housing, spec meaning like about 40 to 50 houses. I'm not talking about onesie twosies, uh, and also for small balance multifamily and getting the and getting those builders who are building the small multifamilies and talking to the to the uh, apartment management companies and maybe 
getting to some of those people who are the first time home buyers. And if you're in a smaller market and the rent is like $1,500 to $2,000, but you have a uh, 80 to hundred thousand dollar income, which is out here in San Diego, is actually kind of poverty line. It's, it's super interesting for us to be able to see how much savings there are and opportunities there are when uh, working with small builders. And, and if you talk to someone like myself in the family office space, well, we're putting out these bridge loans for construction. It, it, uh, it's good news for the inventory that's going to be coming up. Doesn't matter whether and I'm not doing this only in California. I'm doing this in uh, Missouri, Texas, Florida, uh, we've had opportunities in South and North Carolina, uh, Georgia, even, and, and and mainly in the Mountain West states, of course, New Mexico, Colorado, Idaho, Oregon, Washington, California. So it's interesting for us to be able to look at that at, and to go to the multifamily conference next week as I'm talking to the vendors, lenders that are going to be out there. What are they going to be seeing? Because that's going to be somewhat of a leading indicator of inventory that is to come. And not only inventory of housing, but also inventory of buyers. Um, where are they living? Where are they coming from? What are the qualifications and the property management companies that you talk to? So I'm always looking at, at the economics behind uh, the, the main street portion on the street of talking to people. So it's always interesting for us to be able to see that. And I'm excited to talk to Steven because he's been in the business for a while uh, to see what it is that he's looking for what he saw when he first started, what he saw in the, at the second crash, uh, meaning the one that we saw 10 years ago uh, or 15 years ago. And uh, what is it like today as far as the buyer pool? So let, you know, let, we can start digging into that. We can talk about the NBA when I get back, but we can, you know, we can definitely dig into the show today. Yeah. And the level set for the show, if you're listening on Spotify or our YouTube podcast, thank you again. Subscribe always helps. And the way the format's going to work today is, and the way it works every week, is if you hear something, unlike other podcasts and unlike other webinars, write it down on a piece of paper, put it in the notes section of your phone, come back on LinkedIn Audio and look up hashtag more talk, M-O-R-E, like mortgage, real estate, M-O-R-E-T-A-L-K. You'll find a link to our show and you can come on and ask questions. We are the only radio week. We're the longest running weekly show in mortgage. We have podcasts, but we are the longest running live show now in mortgage, I believe. Um, what we're able to do is allow you a forum, which is LinkedIn audio to come and ask your question. You can, you can leave and you can go back and listen to it later on the podcast. So if you hear anything today, please come on. And the way today's podcast is going to work is we are going to talk with Stephen Katz in about 10 minutes and we're going to ask him those type of questions are is there any programs out there that are leading indicators of, of when the market is really going to heat back up from a from people moving perspective I know in my town there's only like two new listings right now that are affordable so it's a it's an inventory problem to even get things shaken and move and then in about 30 minutes we're going to have Steve Richman on who's been at multiple conferences and I think what he does and what I what we talk about a lot in the show and what I'm excited about is he has made a career of going up on stage or going in front I mean I don't want to give him an intro but he is able to put people together in a room and listen to him talk about what's important in a market and it could be any market like he talked at our state and local i'm going to ask him a question about that coming ahead of state and local just what his opinion is on why it's important because we always talk about advocacy on this show but i think you know local loan officers can take programs then they can they don't have to be nationally speaking they can speak we always talk about it in front of their ethos bring on a financial planner i mean if you listen to our show over and over again you could start small and now is the time to own your zip code but bringing people together to learn in this new market, I think is a, is going to be a huge strength. They say, don't call it financial literacy, call it financial empowerment. But if you tuned into our show last week in the week war, um, we debated that, that subject too. So with all that well, said, well, 40% less originators we talked about, right? I mean, mm -hmm. there's so much more opportunity. If you're a mortgage originator and you're out there trying to figure out what to do, I mean, the, the world is your oyster right now. There's the interest rates uh, have been spoken about coming down. They're definitely lower than they were four or five months ago. The up and with the potential more listings that are coming up. I don't. I know that you said there's only two. There's there's 
three in my neighborhood, uh, three listings. But I think that opportunity for teaching financial literacy, I got invited to speak um, at two groups this past week. And for, for the opportunity for originators to get out there, teach financial literacy, teach opportunity, or even teach about what is going on to educate even other mortgage real estate professionals on how to not only build their business and also do more, right? Those who give continually give and those who take, they suck the life out of you. And I think that this is a tremendous opportunity if you're an originator or in the business, or if you're a consumer and you're looking to find out who it is that you that you should be speaking to, this is the opportunity for you to be see seeking out those professionals that are actually networking within their own community, educating within their own community, because that's the professional you want to speak to because they work in abundance, meaning that they are looking for what is the best opportunity for you as the consumer, as the buyer, and not necessarily try, just trying to get a deal, but trying to actually work on your behalf for that lifelong relationship. So what an opportunity for not only the consumer and also for the originator to be going to earn more, speak more, and learn more and do more. Uh, I'm excited. Uh, this is an awesome show. Let me quick fire you with some questions, Michael. Um, so you're a consumer. You think you're financial savvy, so you're on CNBC. You see the New York NYCB reportedly in some talks where their stock's down 60%, their balance sheet, here we go again. Um, whether you know it or not, Flagstar is owned by NYCB, so that's a, a big mortgage player. I believe it's something like um, they have originated $5 billion in loans through correspond that are not, oh, sorry, $15.7 billion, and they have $84.3 billion in servicing. If you're a consumer, just quick fire, I don't think the programs that are available to them have taken a hit at all, despite news like this. What would you say to those consumers from a financial standpoint? You know the market that um, it shouldn't stop you from looking for homes. Uh, this type of no, deal. this is more no. I and I think uh, deal with it. Yeah, there are more products today than there were a year ago or two years ago. Not, not only from agency. Last week we briefly joked about uh, expand the level one, two, and three when that was trying. When Fannie and Freddie had ex expanded credit guidelines from, from 15, 20 years ago, but right now we ha uh, we don't have stated income, but we have uh, where you just need a hot breath and you can get a mortgage. What we have though is alternative form of proving the ability to repay so that home ownership is possible, whether it's through uh, bank statements and then now there's some underwriting guidelines and there's rules. They call it the ability to repay rule uh, in order for you to actually be able to afford the mortgage. And that same ability to repay rule actually uh, prohibits lenders from overcharging you as the consumer. So there are lots of products available that um, if you go to a bank bank, an FDIC insured bank, there's a community reinvestments, um, the CRA product, which uh, allows it. If you are going to buy what they call a census tract, you can go to a bank if they uh, if they have to offer it for the law and say, hey, I would like to buy in a certain neighborhood or I would like to, to get some extra additional better financing. Can you offer that to me? Because my mortgage broker may not have U.S. Bank. I think when they purchase U.S. Bank, they may have purchased some of those products available on a wholesale level, but I'm not sure yet because I haven't used them on a, uh, as a broker. But Union Bank used to offer that here in California all the time. But if you, if the broker doesn't offer it, then that CRA product is still available. Down payment assistance, uh, lower interest rate financing, affordable housing, um, in in specific what they call census tracts. And I think that it's it's undereducated right now. I won't or underinformed to the general consumer because, for example, there's an area where uh, where there are literally 1.7 to 2.2 million dollar houses available for sale out here in California. We're in San Diego. It's about 20 minutes from me. And because of the CRA product and because of census tracts, there's affordable housing where you can buy a condominium in the area for $250,000 to $300,000 in a high income, great school district. It, and those types of neighborhoods are all across the United States. And I think that uh, you just have to talk to specific bankers. So with all sure. these programs out there, Right. And, and we said all these loan officers have left. So now you go out there and, and your loan officer isn't in the business anymore and you have a chance to to audition. Now you can go the easy route and just go online and find one. Kind of like how dating's become. But um, or you can tune into the show, maybe get a little nugget of information. How would you say to a, you know, a younger family member looking around in an area you don't know, Mike, like where would they go to find maybe the loan officer that 
that knows the most programs? Is it a first time home buyer seminar? You have to figure the, the loan officer that takes the time to put that on knows the most, or at least tries the hardest. I, any secrets you would say to consumers looking and, um, the Steve, Steve can come on and comment on this, but just, I, I, I actually, this, Mike. yeah, when I, when I tell my kids, one was in Santa Cruz, the other's in the Riverside right now. The, and I had one in Waco, Texas at Baylor university. I would, I actually told them to contact their local realty and see if there's any first time buyer seminars that are coming up or go on to meet up and see if there's any uh, creative real estate investment groups that are meeting and then go meet the realtors and the originators or loan officers in that area. I like that yeah, idea. idea. Yeah. And a lot of people don't, don't even, they, they, they underutilize the two websites meetup and also Eventbrite because Eventbrite's actually super useful as well. Like, okay, here's another, oh, quick story. When, when I had the mobile app and we were visiting everybody, we went down to a, uh, we landed in Houston when we drove to San Antonio. So AMCAP Gold Financial, we were on our way to Dallas and we stopped in Waco, Texas. Um, actually, Stopped in at a Hooters, right, uh, mm -hmm. to watch. It was a playoff game on. The Packers were on at the time. And, um, you know, I'm in there, and we're eating chicken fingers, and we have to keep going. So um, right off the highway. And I look across, and I'm like, isn't the, tw isn't the Twin Peaks where, like, that big motorcycle shooting melee, whatever you would call it, brawl occurred? And I was like, yeah, I think it is. And then as I said it, all of these, you know, leather jacket old like bikers walked in look like kind of like sons of anarchy you know like oh dear I was like maybe we should just get to, get to check like you know you're in an area you don't know and you, you happen to be reading the newspaper like, but you know what's funny we we end up closing out and we go outside and expecting motorcycles in the parking lot and it was like three different types of toyotas it was like a prius a camry i felt like i was on the episode like wild hogs you ever see that movie <laughs> Uh, they all showed up in Toyotas and I was worried. Um, That's so, hilarious. Uh, just, you, you know, you got to put some effort in in this industry and you got to be go around and visit all the people uh, that are your clients. And when you do, you get some pretty funny stories traveling. Uh, I'm sure Steve can talk about that. He travels all around to different conferences. You just find yourself in different scenarios. Um, okay, assumable mortgages made the news again. When rates go up, assumable mortgages are fashionable. Rates go down. Everybody forgets about them. And I, I think they're difficult to deal with to begin with. But the, it did make the news again. What are your thoughts on, um, is that more like, fan, like when you need them the most, it seems, it's a seller's market. So they're never going to wait around for an assumable. And when you need them the least, I, maybe it's not. So that, I think that's where it gets in the way. You almost need to know the person. No one's going to wait around. Looks like the, the VA did about six, maybe veterans have a system. The VA did about 6,400 assumptions last year, more than wow. double in 2022. Wow, that's huge. The The enemy of the originator right now is not necessarily the, the VA assumption. The enemy right now is not not only the assumption and also subject to financing if if the if the realtor even understands even how that works right? and, or, uh, or blanket mortgages it, because servicing is so poor on on the back end of catching that they don't foreclose on people for that so if if there were more uh, realtors who were professionals who ever actually understood that understood how to uh create the entities in trust for that for that purpose that would be that with the low interest rate environment that we just had that would definitely uh, be the enemy to the originator as long as the buyer has a large down payment um two more quick things and then we'll jump right into our our guest here just want to point out ice um my little birdies have told me, you know, their acquisition of Black Knight was like catching a fallen knife market. Yeah. But the LOS itself had a um, operating income of 193 million in the fourth quarter of 2023. That's up 98% from the year earlier. So uh, it looks like ICE Mortgage Technology posted an adjusted operating income of 508 million. It's also, I don't want to get too much into ICE, but and yes, the technical part of it because it's ice. But I think the renewals too have been coming in at a higher amount, like with any acquisition, right? So that helps with revenue. But good for that. Sure. They, you know, everybody's talking one way, and then they sit there and they're making money here in the fourth quarter post acquisition. When you usually hear, you know, people sometimes leave the product. So uh, some of the big names they said um, 
They added Raymond James. Um, so Raymond James getting into retail and correspondent channels. What do you think of that, Mike? I'm pro- I want to talk to John Tug about that. He's going to be at the conference coming up in Vegas in a few weeks. And uh, Raymond's in charge of whole loan trading over at Raymond James. So I probably want to, before I dig into that, I want to probably get educated on that. We're going to get to Stephen in just a second here. And yeah, Stephen, we could hear you. So we're going to get you literally, about, let's get about 15, six seconds. But the long story short is you have someone in charge of buying mortgage mortgages uh, at uh, at a large financial institution. So he's in charge of buying not just one mortgage at a time, but thousands of mortgages in a pool of mortgages. So the whole loan trader is going to buy those pools. That's a long, listen, that's a long story short. Michael, why don't you go ahead and introduce our guest, Stephen? We've been holding, we've been holding on him. And I'm, I'm super excited to get into this. Yeah, definitely. Stephen, thank you for letting us go around the horn there and kind of getting everybody uh, warmed up for what will be a great interview today uh, or a great uh, conversation around how different mortgage products have really come out over the last couple of years, but it's not talked about, I don't think, in the, this is what I wanted to talk to you about. It's not talked about as much as it should because there's not as much inventory moving. So there's not enough times it gets brought up in ordinary conversations. You have been a pioneer in the marketing space and and you can give your own intro, but I have always looked at you as a pioneer in the marketing space, but not somebody that pats themselves, you know, on the back with all these buy my program. You just keep doing it over and over again. And and then lo and behold, next thing you know, other people are doing the same thing you did. So I see you almost as like a Nostradamus on knowing where it goes and you have. Well, I don't know about that. (laughs) <laughs> a little bit so we tell us about what it's like originating in this market and with loan officers you know leaving what kind of gap does that leave locally for consumers to shop for or kind of find their next advisor for the future well i mean we've definitely seen the market change and i mean i've been in the business 31 years so the market changes completely about every three years, but we've actually seen it change like over the last six months and then the six months before that. So um, right now we're in a situation where we're starting um, <clears throat> the uphill, or I should say the upward trajectory of business. Business is getting better and better by the week. Um, we're, not, we're not quite at like the average volume level but we're certainly getting close to that. Um, as far as programs come out, you know, we we try in the mortgage industry, of course, we're governed by Fannie Mae. I'm assuming that the people on your call are a little bit uh, more um, knowledgeable about mortgage. So if I say something that I need to break down, just let me know. But um, we yeah, actually, Stephen, we do have a few um, buyers, I would say, few of the listeners that we have that have reached out to me personally are uh, above the age of 20 and under the age of 35. So if you don't mind explaining uh, a few elementary things, that'd be great for the listeners. Sure. Well, Fannie Mae is kind of the governing body of the entire secondary mortgage market. So we follow their lead. But um, what we hear from a lot of, well, from all buyers is that there's a lack of inventory. So that's the big difference between the bubble of 2008 when we had an abundance of inventory we had so much inventory that home prices came crashing down. I remember doing a loan for a four bedroom, uh, two and a half bath, 2,200 square foot home for $145,000 and the appraisal didn't come in. So, uh, you know, the world has changed since 2008. So uh, right now we're suffering from a lack of inventory. But that said, uh, Part of that reason is because interest rates were high and people were just hanging on to their homes. So there was no move up business. Nobody wanted to give up their their big house at a 3% interest rate to move into a smaller home that has a 7% rate and end up with the same payment. So we all had those golden handcuffs, I guess. I mean, mean, I'm in that, that group as well. But as rates go into the fives, then we're seeing uh, more inventory come on the market, then we'll continue to do that. So what are we looking for? What do people need, first-time home buyers? <coughs> well, we found, excuse me, I'm coming off a cold, so I hope I don't sound too Oh, you're good. You're good. Nasally. But what, what we see is the biggest hurdle for first-time home buyers is cash at closing. 
So there are a lot of people, believe it or not, that actually have good credit. And a lot of people have good jobs. I mean, if a couple is working and they each have a, you know, just an entry level job today, that's 40000 a piece. So that's 80000 in income. So the numbers will work. So um, affordability is suffering a little bit with the higher rates and the higher prices of homes. But you'd be surprised how many people still qualify for a house. A pro the problem that a lot of them have is the cash at closing. So there's a couple of things that are out there that we're doing to help people. Number one is there's a program called Home Ready for first-time home buyers, and it allows first-time home buyers to put 3% down. Now, this is not news. This has been out for probably four or five years. <clears throat> the advantage is that it allows them uh, to put a smaller down payment, and it also gives them lower mortgage insurance, so their payment's a little bit better. Um, we have uh, embellished this program and then anybody that qualifies for the Fannie Mae Home Ready, we're going to give them a grant of $4,000. So uh, that's a big help. And I know it sounds like, well, there's no really, there's no free money. But in this case, it, it's free money. Literally, we put it aside $3 billion. And until that runs out, which should be uh, give us a good year's worth of loans, it's there, and you should take advantage of it if you can. Keisha, can you talk about the market that you're in right now. We have a nationwide audience, so I just want to make sure that you tell people the sure. the geographical location that you're in, so everything's relative. Sure, I'm in Atlanta, Georgia. Um, I'm on the north side of Atlanta, so Atlanta is kind of bifurcated into north side and south side. So the north side, the average sales price is probably around six hundred to seven hundred thousand entry level is going to be between three and four hundred thousand and on the south side you just kick it down a notch and that's going to be your average home is probably four to five hundred thousand entry level two to three hundred thousand north side is more conventional loans south side is more government loans. so that's pretty much it. and i do a good share of both but anyway uh one thing i wanted to touch on and We've seen what's called down payment assistance, and down payment assistance has gotten kind of a bad rap, and rightfully so. So I was just at this conference uh, last week, actually, in Detroit, and I was talking to other mortgage professionals, and I'm like, you know, I hate down payment assistance programs because what we do is we take the borrowers that need the help the most, and then we charge them more, and we give them a, a uh, some money to help them out, but we slap a second mortgage on their home and we, we take advantage of a loophole. There's a loophole in underwriting guidelines. And it says that the seller or nobody can come up with your down payment except you, with the exception of a charitable organization. So you have these people that go and they start one of those, what is it, a 506 or whatever you get charity yeah, status. Right. And then so then basically they charge you a bunch of money and then they give the borrower, give being the uh, funny word here, they give the borrower a grant or a, a, a help with the down payment. And because they're exploiting that loophole, they're able to charge them so much more. So the borrower really gets screwed in the end. And I hate it. I, I, don't, I don't do them anymore. If I won't do the loan for my sister, I'm not going to do the loan for a customer. So... Uh, what we've developed uh, is grant programs. Grants are different. Grants, we give you the money and we're done. You got the money. See you later. It's like if you went to school and you got like one of those Pell grants where they give you a thousand bucks or whatever to help with tuition. That's it. It just is what it is. There's no strings attached. Is the we the state? Is the we Fannie and Freddie or is the we um, your firm? So there's a couple of things. So on this four thousand dollar deal. That's coming from one of our investors. So uh, it's basically uh, just uh, to create goodwill and to help. I know it sounds ridiculous. Why would a mortgage company give away a bunch of money? But hey, <clears throat> business was slower and we wanted to drum up some business and help out some first time home buyers. And listen, we made a shit ton of money over the last couple of years, billions and billions of dollars. We can advertise, we can spend money on Super Bowl ads, or we can give the money to the people that need it the most to help them buy homes. And a quick note, there are no mortgage Super Bowl ads um, this year. Uh, the average price of a Super Bowl ad, I think, actually $7 million. 200 right, million well, Americans are going to watch the Super well, Bowl. Well, th thanks for the clarification. But I think you get what I'm saying. 
You know, well, I, mean, I, I totally, I couldn't agree with you more. I think it, there's you, ways uh, to spend marketing dollars, and I don't think there's a better way than to uh, help out a customer. Yeah. So, and, and so going back to your cash, okay. uh, so this must help with cash to close. I find that very interesting. So I'm a, let's go to, let's go, let's move up the age group a little bit. You're 37, 38, 39 years old, and you should have moved out long, you know, you should have bought a home a long time ago, but the world's very nice to be that age and, and um, these days. So you, you, but you never did a good job saving, but you definitely have about somewhere between 7,000 and, and more or less. And you're saying like, I don't know, is, is that on the cusp? I guess it depends on what price home you buy, but what, tell us about the cash to close piece and what uh, a consumer oftentimes disqualifies himself on assumptions that are nowhere near true. So let's say you find a home for $300,000. And you have a shrewd agent that negotiates for the seller to pay the closing cost and prepays. You're going to need $9,000. 3% of $300,000 is $9,000. We're going to give you four. Now you only need five. Is that simple enough? So this program, just so if you're taking notes, it's called Home Ready Plus. It's for first-time homebuyers and repeat homebuyers. But there are income limits because it's under the umbrella of being Fannie Mae Home Ready. Are you ready for the next one? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. <laughs> Fannie Mae and its wisdom has come up with this idea of, you know, we've been helping people that buy into these kind of um, revitalized areas. Uh, every city's got them where they're trying to, you know, turn the area around. And so they've had uh, kind of- Opportunity zones, right? Opportunity oh, zones. There you go. So uh, they've tried to help those areas revitalize by getting some fresh homeowners in there. And so there are special deals. But now they've done the reverse. They said, well, you know what? Let's help people get out of the bad areas. Let's just help people go from being, you know, so let's help people go from being in a less desirable area to maybe a more uh, family oriented area. So we're going to give you a grant of $5,000 based on where you live now. And it's weird. So you have to, uh, I probably wouldn't have done it this way, but yet here it is. It's called the Home Ready SPCP program. And depending on where you currently rent, you can buy um, a new home and get $5,000. I have a couple moving from Los Angeles whose apartment was in this area and they're buying a, a friggin' $800,000 home in Cobb County. And they're getting the money. So um, wow. there's now on this program, you have to be a first time home buyer, but there's no income limit. So you could buy a home up to, you know, the Fannie Mae limit, uh, $800,000. You can get the $766,000 loan on it. So now I can tell you that most of America is not going to qualify for this. But if you're a listener and you're in an area that you think, you know, it's always worth it uh, to contact me, I can look up the address in two seconds and tell you whether you got a check for $5,000 waiting on you. That's amazing. Actually, I didn't even know that. <laughs> not, not to money the waters, but, I'm, but in addition to the 5000 you get a $500 credit to pay for your appraisal and you get a $500 credit to pay for a warranty on the home. So you could actually get six thousand dollars. It's called the, the, the Home, Home Ready SPCP program. That's great because now you can get a now if you're a home buyer and and your uh, realtor and mortgage originator want to get some commitment from you, you pay for the appraisal up front after you do the inspections and so on and so forth. But normally you don't get a credit back for that unless you ask for it inside of a contract where in, in the form of a higher price. However, in this particular situation, you don't need to pay a higher price for that. In this, if uh, if if you can agree to this mortgage loan, then you can actually get a credit for that appraisal, and in addition to getting the financing uh, procured by by the originator as well. That's really impressive. I like that product. Right, and with both of those programs, you get your regular market rates. So if you didn't qualify for the program, you get the same rate. I mean, everybody gets the same rate. This is not a jacked up deal where we're charging you a half a percent higher in rate and keeping the rebate money and moving the money around the, the closing table. No, this is a straight up deal market rate. Okay. You ready? Yeah. Yep. 
Okay, so what about the people that don't, they're not first time home sense. buyers and they don't have any income limit and uh, they want to they want a lower interest rate? Well, this is a deal. We're doing a, you, you heard of a 2-1 buy down? Yeah. I, and, and you, are your listeners familiar with that? Michael Zhao, how would you describe a 2-1 buy down as our? A 2-1 buy down is where the seller uh, effectively buys the interest rate down by paying the mortgage company uh, an advanced fee so that the interest rate will be 2% lower one year, the first year, 1% lower the next year, and then remain fixed for, it for the remainder of the term. You, you nailed it, buddy. Nailed it. Okay. Now, my follow-up question to you is, I don't know, $400,000 loan, what, what does this cost? Well, it would cost. I, I, I don't. I haven't seen the pricing, but I suspect it might cost about on a four hundred thousand dollar loan. How much does that cost? Maybe six thousand, eight thousand dollars. Well, no, it's about two and a half points, so it would cost about ten thousand. Okay. No. So, Still. So, okay. I don't know about you, but I don't know any sellers that are giving away ten thousand dollars. And the problem, the other problem with this program is when it, when is your talk about interest rates coming down? A lot of debate is that it's going to be six months or it might be a year. Would you agree? Yeah, something like that. Yeah, six months to a year. So why do you need to pay to buy that rate down for three for uh, for three years and then um, you're going to end up not getting the advantage of all of that money? So I got a better deal. How about this? And I, I hear people all the time, they're like, Stevie, what are the rates? And this is not this is not an accurate rate. This is not a, an offer to to do business. This is just me just pulling a number out of the air, depending on your situation. But they're somewhere in the six and a quarter, six and a half range, and they're like, "Great, call me when they're five and a half." Okay, well now I'm calling because we'll do a one o buy down. Just one year, you get one percent lower. So if your loan officer quotes you six and a half, you get five and a half for one year, and we don't charge anything for that. We're just going to give it to you. Now, some lenders won't do that. Some lenders will maybe raise the rate a smidge. And I still think it's a good deal. So um, I'm a believer in the 1-0 buy-down. That's just going to get us from point A to point B in a year. You're going to end up refinancing, and you're going to get that rate permanently. But it's a way to kind of cheat the system. And there's you know, and that's just uh, for everybody getting a conventional loan. There's no income limit or or first time home buyer, it doesn't matter. You really have, uh, what I like about this show is, this one in particular, even is for our listeners who've been listening all along, you're starting to now hear actionable programs that will give you a one-up. One, if your originator doesn't know about this, then during the low time, maybe they weren't doing enough studying, right? Sharpening their, their sword. But two, this is a great place to start. This is a great place to get yourself ahead this is a great place if you're worried about equity going down a little bit, even though I think it's gone up, what, 71 out of the last 74 years, we're all positive equity in real estate. But now if it goes down a little bit, you've hedged yourself. You, you're getting rewarded for just being in the right geolocation and the, and the right attributes. To not take advantage of it would be insane. It would just mean that nobody knew about it enough to educate you on it, right? Right. Um, so I guess with that said, one, one more fact I want to have before we move on to Steve Richmond is that, say, for example, uh, you sold your house a few years ago and you're in a large market area like Seattle, San Diego, or Manhattan, and you have a few hundred thousand dollars because you sold your property, um, you and you, but you haven't owned in a few years, you are you are now considered a first time home buyer. If you three don't years to, pass, if three years, yeah, you know, yeah, because in my marketplace, um, I know of. Plenty of people who haven't, who they used to own a property. They've got literally a half a million dollars in their bank account, not even in stock funds or mutual. It's literally in their FDIC insured bank account. And they're like, well, I don't qualify for these first time buyer programs, but I've got, you know, half a million dollars in my account. And they don't even know what they don't know, meaning that if you know of someone that's still renting, they've got some money uh, and, you, and you think it's too expensive or whatever, well, you actually can qualify for that first time buyer product. And, and I think that the originators like Steven, Steven Katz, uh, they can root. And, you know, you talked about your buyer moving from Los Angeles into Georgia. I think those are opportunities that, that you, you can definitely reach out to us or to Steven 
and start asking some questions. Hey, maybe it's been a few years. Uh, you got the money and you want to get back in. This is the time to start asking. Yes, yeah, Stephen's information will be in the comment section of this YouTube uh, so, playlist as well as our Spotify. And like I said, we're the only show that I know of going this long live show. So if there's something here and you have a question, come Thursdays, 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific, LinkedIn audio, hashtag more talk for the week after. Ask a question and then we'll get Stephen back on to answer it. Uh, Stephen, we'll actually do, I'm going to do you a solid here. I'm going to let you segue over to Steve for us. Okay. Uh, on how, how, how loan officers can take okay. programs like you're saying and get them to the market, but I'll let you say your final thoughts as you segue. So if you need to reach me, it's super simple. Just uh, go to reach Stephen. It's S T E P H E N reach Stephen.com. And it's got all my websites, my contacts, my emails, all that stuff. But I can tell you, you're in for a real treat. And that is uh, to hear Steve Richmond. We uh, spoke together at a conference and uh, have been longtime friends. And he is just a delight. And really, I don't know of anybody who's got their finger on the pulse of what's going on, the whole industry, the way that Steve does. So I'm going to hand the mic over to him and let him go. I'm humbled, Mr. Katz. Totally humbled. Listening to your wisdom, your knowledge, your information. When I think about it, and, and, and Michael, tell me, am I giving a little feedback? I hear a little feedback where I am. Is it coming in okay? You're coming in just fine on my end, by the way. No feedback, you're good. Okay, I just want to make sure. Um, it's, it's really funny because one of the things that I always say, because Stephen Katz is a guy who gets loans done. I'm a guy who's talking about strategies, how to go out there. I haven't actually originated an actual loan in a few years. I have done it, but I, I'm now more on the training end and the presentation and the marketing end of it. And one of the things that I always say to groups is depth beats breadth. Okay. I say this, if you're a loan officer listening, I'm saying depth beats breadth. What does that mean? The deeper you understand your topic, the better it's going to be. We're saying, I know a little bit about everything. You want somebody who goes deep? I was listening to the conversation from Mr. Stephen Katz right there, and there's a whole lot of depth that he was getting into. So kudos to that. We're taking depth beating Brett. But Michael and Michael, that's my bravo to Mr. Katz. Where do you want me to go in the conversation? Well, first of all, Steve, thanks for coming on the show. Michael, you can go first and ask the question. I actually have one I want to for sure ask, but you want, why don't you go ahead? Lead us off, Michael. Steve, first of all, thanks for coming on to the show. And, and as you're talking about reaching out, educating, trusting, uh, and I'm, I'm reading your profile on LinkedIn. For those of our listeners that are listening and not on the internet, uh, you can go ahead and find uh, his information on LinkedIn to find out. Uh, I find it interesting that you're speaking on uh, and you speak on differentiation from competition to competition. So when you're speaking to mortgage originators or even to realtors, what are some of the attributes that you're looking for? So for our consumers that are, lo that are looking to find out who are the true professionals, what are the, some of the attributes that you either train on or speak on so that they can find that, find the professional that would be that would have that leg up in differentiation. That's not just about interest rate, but truly about market differentiation in their in their geographical area. Well, the first thing is, and thank you for inviting me on here. Happy to be here. You look me up online. By the way, I am different than uh, Stephen Katz. He's P-H, I'm S-T-E-V-E. -E. My last name is Richman, R-I-C-H-M-A-N. That's what the goal is. So if you are looking for me on LinkedIn and when we talk about the depth of Pete's breath, that's one thing. But I take it a little step further. There's a guy by the name of Mark Zinner. He's a great guy. I used to work with him all the time. And he always said, I know somebody knows what they're talking about when they can go three questions deep. So my first comment to you, Michael, is one, if you're somebody trying to find out if that person's really good for me, can they answer three questions? Or can they only just scratch the surface going on one question? On the flip side, if I'm an originator and I want to show people my expertise, then I go out and I will show them, okay, I can go three questions deep. Just don't hit that top level that's right there. That's the very first thing. Um, 
when you are looking to differentiate yourself, and, and I mean this more than anything else, and, and there's no negativity that I'm saying whatsoever, but most LOs have the same programs. So when you're saying, oh, Fannie has this program, and, 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 and then, then anybody who sells to Fannie Mae has that same program. There is a place called, we were talking down payment assistance before, we were talking about grants. They usually come from the state or something like that. But it's eligible. A lot of people are going to be eligible for that. So I don't think it's the program that's going to allow you to differentiate yourself from the competition because everybody has that same program. It's the one, do you understand it and can you go deep with it? Two, can you communicate it so that your customers are going to understand it and that they're going to be um, comfortable with you? And right now, especially in this world of AI, because everybody's talking about artificial intelligence, I flat out say you have to be unapologetically yourself. I think in today's market, authenticity goes a long, long way. We, you, you can open up any time. I, I was going to say open up a newspaper. That just shows you how old I am because who opens up a newspaper anymore? I mean, that's, that's yesterday's newspapers. This lender's in trouble. That lender's in trouble. This one made a mistake. Look at what the CFPB and who they're fining. And I, I don't find that everybody's trying to say, okay, where's that really big Goliath that's out there anymore? I think people are looking for that authentic individual who actually is going to be able to work with me, help with me, and I'm going to be able to get in touch with them. So to me, authenticity is everything right now. I think authenticity comes across really well on video because you get to see the person, but underrated is these phones have so many algorithms to serve up to the people relevant information that, that works beyond advertising, just on their own. My view is the loan officers that are left, and we did we talked about on the show the other day, there are about 50 more zip codes than loan officers um, that have done more than two deals a month. Uh, last well, month. well, look, Michael, they, they, you hear it all the time. There's less loan officers out there. I promise you this. No customer, no home buyer has ever said, man, I wish I could get a hold of a loan officer. I have no idea where to look. So even though there are less loan officers out there, I promise you the customers are still getting in touch with them. Okay, so this is what I'm saying. If the future loan officer could find a way to dominate the video in their area, but supplement it or complement it, maybe is a better way, complement it with in-person meetings. And we talked about on the last show, like a loan officer used to be somebody that when they walked into a supermarket, it wasn't just, oh, that person's a loan officer. The loan officer could almost fire back the, 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 the person's kids' names. And, and, and maybe we got a little bit away from that with everybody having to go inside. Now that everybody's coming back out or already back out, people are redoing their digital strategies. I just think the secret, the, the, the golden egg would be take what you do, Steve, so well. How can a loan officer work with their referral partners and get in front of people? And, and it can be in front of five people. I mean, this show right now live as five people, but it then ends up having hundreds of people watch it on YouTube, right? And then if I get in front of people in person consistently every week, so how advice for Omni Channel on how to get into that, not being fearful of the vanity metrics of who shows up, not being fearful of getting on stage. How would you take what Steve said, let's say, and get it on video and then get it in person uh, in front of people in your town or, or city? Number one. I don't like the way I look on video. I don't like the way I sound on video. Well, here's a news flash, my friend. That's the way you look and sound to every single person every day of your life. Get over it. If, if my ugly mug and my northeastern nasally twang can come across here, you're more than welcome to go online and people will end up listening to you. Number two, there's the, it, it is a absolutely, it's a slow cooker. It's not a microwave oven. You cannot go out there and cut one video and then say, okay, why is my phone not ringing? What's going on? It takes repetition and, and multiple tries and multiple hits to be able to get out there and make that attraction because there's a wonderful world word, excuse me, a wonderful word, and it's called a parasocial relationship, para, P-A-R-A, -A, parasocial relationship. Now, I know, I, I don't know about you, but have you ever watched a movie, a TV show, you go online and you're like, oh my God, that actor or that, that sports figure or that musician or whatever it is, 
I love them. They are so awesome. Or or politician, whatever it is. Or have you ever seen somebody on TV or in a movie or online videos and you're like, I really hate that person. That person's a total jerk, right? I mean, we all do that. We actually, as consumers, are creating relationships with people that we see online, on our television, in movies, listen to on radio and things like that. I can tell you just by being out there all the time, how many times people come up to me and they start talking to me like I am their best friend and I have no idea who they are. And my comment is they have a parasocial relationship with me because they've already developed a relationship with me that's very one-sided because I'm speaking out to a thousand, but they feel like I'm speaking directly to them and they're getting to know me. Once you understand that, you say, okay, wait a second. People are seeing me online. They're creating a relationship with me that's right there. What do you want out of a relationship? Well, to me, the best relationships I have are multi-dynamic. They're multi-point. They are not just, let me tell you about this loan program, and here's how this loan program is going to do for you. I like to show, we're going, right? I can go deep with that one, but for that touch, just to get to know you, I like to have a little greater breadth because I need to figure out what's the thing that you're interested in that you're going to continue the conversation with me about. So I'm real big on parasocial relationship. And then the third thing is people say, well, I don't know what to say. What, what do I talk about? How do I, how do I get into this? It's what I call squatum, S-Q-A-T-M. It's so easy. It's squatum. One, just tell a story. Everybody, Stephen Katz says, I had a customer and let me tell you what I did for them. That's a story. I'm riveted. I want to hear more because that's a great story. Or SQA. What's QA? Question answer. I, I got this question the other day. How does down payment assistance work? Here is an answer for that. I, got a, I was on a webinar the other day. You might not have listened to this webinar, but on that, one of the hosts of this webinar actually asked me, what is the difference between a grant and down payment assistance? I thought that was a great question. So let me share that answer with you all right now in the event that you didn't hear that webinar. Boom, look what you just did. You just gave them that information. Then what's T? Because you just went S-Q-A. T, tip, trick, tutorial. Tip, trick, tutorial. Here's a tip to be able to purchase your first home. Here's a tutorial on how to be better on using the internet. Um, here, here's a trick that you want to do that there's a thing called a grant out there. And here's a trick on how you can qualify for that. Boom, tip, trick, tutorial. And then the last one, M, it's what are the mistakes and the myths that are people that are making? And nobody wants to hear, hi, let me tell you how everything's great. But when you say, here's the number one mistake people are making when they're purchasing their first home, that's when people, because they have that fear of making the mistake. So when you talk about the myths and the mistakes, nobody wants to have the mistake. And that's when they listen up. How's that for a word salad? Y'all got quiet on me. Did I speak too much? No, I love it. I, I, I took notes on, on that one there. Story, question, answer, tip, trick, tutorial, mistake. And you can hit minus 30 seconds on your Spotify and podcast and write that one down yourself. That is great. Steve, I, I, I know we're coming up on the end of time here, but we'll go over a minute or two just for the podcast sake. Somebody wants to do a lunch and learn type with a, with, with a local financial planner, lawyer, real estate agent. What do you recommend to somebody that, that speaks? Obviously, you must have started somewhere. How many people intimidate themselves or just talk themselves out of it before they even start it. I just can't be, and you can reach out to us here on Adopt the Brand. I would love to help anybody that's stuck here. No, no problem. I'll, I'll just do it out of my own passion that I think it's the right way. But how does somebody get from zero to, I guess, you know, where, where they're as comfortable as you are, Steve? And by the way, Steve doesn't drink coffee. Some people have the advantage of drinking coffee. No, no coffee by me. But, but the answer right there is... You have to understand that not everybody's as, not that they're not as smart as you, but they don't have the experience that you have. So I always say, you know, I get up sometimes on stage, I'm like, doesn't everybody know this? And you know what the answer is? No, they don't. And the reason they don't know it is because you live, eat, and breathe this stuff every single day. I don't know what their job is, but you don't know their job as well as they know their job. So we, we bore ourselves and we think that we are average 
and everybody knows what we know. And guess what? They don't. You have that special story to be able to tell. You have that extra knowledge base. You know just a little bit more. And then the next thing you want to do, and you always want to do this, you when if you're talking to them, you make that real estate agent that you're getting in front of, you make that um, divorce attorney that you're getting in front of, the financial planner, you give them the information that they can then use to make themselves look like the star and that they look like they're more knowledgeable, right? It's all about building them up, not just building your, look. you don't want to say, look at me, look at me, look at me. You want to say, here, let me give you this. And now everyone's going to want to look at you. You make them a star. There's no way that they wouldn't want to talk to you. We have guests up here all the time and it's, you know, how can we help you? And I think we often, that's the beauty of all these ways to get out the message now. You're right. You, you forget that just because you love something and, and can go deep on it, it doesn't mean somebody else has enough time during the day to fall in love with mortgages or fall in love with housing. And I know we went over on time and I apologize, but I got to just say this. I ask anybody out there, go Google top 100 Instagram influencers or TikTok influencers. Go pick top 100 influencers. There are going to be zero mortgage influencers that are a top influencer. They're all in fashion. They're all in comedy. They're all in pop culture. We have a very small target market that we're going after. So if you could actually just help 10 financial planners, imagine what that would do to your business. You don't have to go after the masses and get hundreds of thousands of people to follow you. That's that, Those are those types of influencers. We're in a very specific thing. If you get 10 new real estate agents that are following you, you, you pick up 10, are you kidding me? That's beyond a home run right there. So, so look at what an influencer actually is. Yeah, I was gonna say, Mike, you spoke about it the other day on a mic drop, just how much people live these lives that we, we don't even know if they're real or healthy, but they're certainly not talking about their home finances. You know, they're taking pictures of meals. They're not. So there's no relationship. There's nowhere anybody can even feel real when it comes to balancing a P&L in their house because nobody's putting it out there. And if you can get through to 10 people, it's a good start. And then if they happen to be referral partners like real estate agents. Steve, if 10 people listen to this podcast that actually want to reach out to you and find out how they can have more of your advice in their life, what's the best way to do it? Steve Richman.com, R I C H M A N.com. That's who I am. Nice. Perfect. That's, uh, and, and any final thoughts, any final words to close out this episode? Yeah. Just so impressed, Stephen uh, Katz, on, on what you have to say about the program that are available. Thanks, Steve Richman, on talking about how to, how to be more exposed by, uh, uh, to get more exposure and to have the confidence to go get more exposure uh, uh, in sales or origination. I think it's definitely talked about but definitely not promote it, which is interesting that, that you, that for me to say it in that way, but we can talk about exposure, but if we don't take the action on it, I talked about that last week, very briefly, uh, then, you know, that all the talk about it doesn't do anything if we don't keep on self-promoting ourselves. So great show today, Michael. 